Greetings chess players! Today, I'm going to introduce some unusual questions that only Retroid Chess Puzzle can ask. If you don't know what the Retroid Chess Puzzle is, you might want to see the previous video first. I bet you haven't seen this kind of question in the chess puzzles. The first example is the Invisible King. Black to move, and where is the Invisible White King? To reach this position from the starting setup, there could be only one answer. If you want to find out by yourself, pause the video. Shall we start? First of all, we see that the white bishop is checking the king. That means the white last move was to check the king, unless the invisible king is in between the bishop and the king. However, every single square is under attack, and white cannot leave their king on the checked square. So we conclude that the white last move was to check the king with the discovered attack. And there are two ways to do these discovered attacks. The first one is to move the pawn, and the second one is move the king. But if white moves the pawn from g2 for the last move, then how could this bishop get in here? It's impossible. So the only possible move was to move the king to check. And the king should have moved from one of these squares. This square was obviously impossible since there's two kings next to each other. And how about this position? If this was the case, then the black's last move was to check the king with their bishop. Then where could that bishop came from? It's either from c2 or b1. But both of them is attacking the king, so the bishop should have captured something on d3. Meanwhile, white has lost only 3 pieces, the 2 rooks and a dark squared bishop. But if black took all 3 pieces in these 3 squares, it doesn't make sense because all 3 squares are bright, and the dark squared bishop cannot be captured anywhere. So the white king could not be on e4. What about f3? You can see that the queen and the knight is double checking the king and black has no way to double check the king from this position. What about g2? That's also a double check from the queen and the knight. So it seems like there were no square that the white king could ever was. Can you find the hole? Yep. This double check is possible if black has under promoted the pawn to a knight. So we found out where the white king was. And what would be the next move? There's only one move for white. That's moving the king to g1. So the answer is g1. Now, we are going to see a very very complicated example. There's an unknown piece on g4. I marked it with the question mark. Black to move, and what is the unknown piece? If you want to solve it by yourself, pause the video. Okay, let's get into it. The first thing we should notice is this bishop. This bishop couldn't get here. At the time the a pawn was on a2, obviously bishop couldn't get to a2. And after the a pawn captures something, the bishop still cannot get to a2. So how could this bishop get through the pawn? The only way to explain is that the bishop is actually a promoted pawn. The pawn started from e2, captured 4 pieces to get to a3, go down, and capture the one more piece to get to b1. Then get back to a2. That means the e-pawn has captured 5 pieces. However, white also have lost 5 pieces on the board. What about this bishop? The dark square bishop died on their home tile, so I'm not counting it. So every white pieces, except the bishop, has been captured by the black e-pawn. So now we know that the unknown piece is a black piece, and other black pawns went straight. The next step is to find out the white last move. Recall that it's black's turn. Obviously, these pieces couldn't be the last moves. If the rook has moved, then it came from e1, which is the checking position. So rook could not have been moved. How about the king? The king should came from b1, and that's the checked position. And black has no last move to check the king from the non-checking position. So this is also not possible. That leaves the only possible last move for white, which is to castle. That means the white king was stationary the whole time. And then a new question arises. We know that this rook has started on h1 and is captured by the black e-pawn. How could it escape the jail? Now we see that the white g-pawn and h-pawn has swapped their files. And there are two possible order captures. The first case. The h-pawn captures first, 
rogue escapes, then the chip on captures. But that doesn't explain how this black bishop has entered this chimney. When the h pawn was an h2, obviously bishop couldn't get there, and after the pawn captures something, the bishop still couldn't go there. The second case, the g pawn captures something, rook escapes, then the h pawn captures something. But it still doesn't explain how this bishop entered here. It couldn't enter when the h pawn was on h2, and after it captures something, the bishop still couldn't come in. However, in this time, there's one possibility that can explain this break-in. The bishop is actually a promoted pawn. The black g pawn got through the white pawns, promoted on g1, then moved to h2. Only g pawn could do this because black's pawns, other than e pawn, went straight downward. And since these white pawns were blocking the way, black f pawn or black h pawn couldn't have promoted. So there were no more black's promotions. Now we can finally answer the question. We already know that the unknown piece is a black piece. It cannot be a pawn because black g pawn has promoted to this bishop. It couldn't be a rook or the queen since there were no more black's promotions. Bishop could not be the answer because that would block the castling. So the only possible answer is the black knight. Great, isn't it? So this was the chapter 3. In the next video, I'll talk about the greatest chess puzzle ever. Make sure you keep your eyes on this series. Thank you for listening!